Hey guys, so this project, you're going to create these beautiful flickering flames. This is going to teach you how to use symbols and create what's called nested animation. So let's get started. Open, animate, create new. You're going to make a character animation. We're going to make this one just for fun. Playing around with different sizes, resolutions, shapes. Make it 700 by 700, frame rate 30, platform type action script 3.0. Create that. Very first thing, file, save as. You are going to save it. I'm going to get rid of Okay, so I've been working on these, making sure I perfect it for this tutorial. I am in my KD OneDrive folder, animation, tweening, flickering flames. I'm going to call this... My last name is Randall. You do your last name. Underscore flames. This one's going to be 3.0. Because computers don't like it when you try to name two files the exact same thing. Huh. Okay. So first thing we're going to do, you're going to be working with creating flames, which typically, traditionally are, you know, orange, red, yellow. Make them whatever you want. But I'm going to be doing traditional colors. I need to change the color of my stage on my properties tab, doc. I want to do something that is going to be a contrasting color to the oranges and reds I'm going to use. So, you know, I could do green if I wanted to burn out my retinas, that'd be pretty great. Um, I'm going to do... Hmm, I do green, but that feels kind of Christmassy. Do whatever it is you'd like to do, and I'll do what I would like to do. Mm, I'm just going to go with the blue again. You can use the um, eyedropper, or you can come here to pick whatever you'd like. I want more of this. Nice. It's like the same. Never mind. All right. So my background, my stage is, uh, co uh, the color is changed. Wow, I can talk. Double click layer one, name this background. You remember from your rotoscope, you're going to end up with a lot of layers often. And it, you just save yourself a lot of headache and heartache and just make a habit of saving, saving. Re it's late. Renaming all of your layers so you know exactly what you're dealing with and how to layer them and arrange them when you need to. Lock it. You're not going to be doing any edits on that. Then you're going to create your flame symbol. You can create it with the pen tool if you want. You can create it with the paintbrush tool. I'm going to do it with the rectangle tool because I hate the pen tool and I refuse to use it. So I'm going to click select rectangle tool and I cannot draw on my background layer because it's locked. So if you run into that, you need to make a new layer, call this flame and you will run into that. So make a new layer and I'm going to draw a red rectangle. I do not need an outline, so I'm going to get rid of the stroke. And this is where I can change the color if I'd like to. Oh, but what now? Why did this not change colors? Well, because I didn't have it selected. So select it here. I want to change to this, this dark red. See what that looks like. Ooh, I like that a lot. Okay. And we have no, oh, look at that. See, here's the problem that I ran, that I did. And you'll probably do this yourself. When you go to change something, you need to make sure you have it selected. Let me get to where. Okay, cool. What I did was I was trying to change things here. I need to have... My entire thing selected so i want no stroke and i'm going to change the fill to that nice dark red okay cool anything that you want to make sure you're editing make sure it's selected okay so 
to turn this into a flame shape, I am going to use that pen tool that I hate, hate, hate to get rid of this anchor point. And I'm going to come back to my selection tool. When I hover over the point, I'll be able to drag it over here. And then when you hover over a side, you can bulge it out. Let's see. This will take some finessing um, because, you know, you're turning a, a rectangle into a flame shape. So take your time, make it something that you're going to like looking at. I'm actually going to make it a little bit taller. That looks nice. Okay, so flames tend to have what's called a gradient where they fade from one color to another. So to get that taken care of, select the flame shape that you just created. Double click fill. Just to see that's not where you go. I'm just kidding. <laughs> go over here to your color tab. And instead of solid color, we're going to change this. Make sure it's selected. We're going to change this to a linear gradient. What that does is it gives us a gradient of straight lines. We can also, whenever you need to, use a radial gradient, which is going to give it that nice circle fade. But for this one, we're going to do a linear gradient. Obviously, uh, Flames, candle flames, typically aren't black and white, uh, so I need to change those colors. And also, I need to have it so that it fades from the bottom to the top. In order to do that, you're going to come over here. It's going to be your second tool. It might be free transform. If you see that, right click, select gradient transform tool, and then select here. And then I'm going to rotate around, and I'm going to spread it out so I have a nice soft fade and bring that up here okay right, cool now i need to change the colors so over here this is what we're looking at as far as the gradient where we start where we end we're going from black to white to change the color double click this point here be careful not to, to click where there's a plus because that's going to add another uh um, anchor point here. If you accidentally do that, just drag it down in a way. Double click. I want to start out with maybe like maybe like start it blue. You know how sometimes at the bottom of flames they can be blue where it's really hot? And then I want to have it fade to a nice yellow. So that's what we got going on here so far. So play around with that. I need some reds and oranges. What's going on right now with just those two spots, it fades automatically from this blue and then it just fades, um, like I said, automatically to the yellow. I want to have it fade. And here it's given us the exact um, trends uh transforming color right here um i don't want that kind of purple i want it to be red oh look i made an extra one that i don't need i'm going to click and drag to get rid of it so red and then i want it's looking kind of cool you can play with how far apart your colors are. So if I want a bunch of blue, I'll pull up the blue. I don't want a bunch of blue, so I'm going to take that down. And I need it to fade a bit more subtly. Okay. And bring in more yellow. Ooh. I just added one. I think I just added two. Get rid of those. Oh, 
Okay. That looks pretty cool. Do whatever you think looks nice for yours. Cool. I like that. Let's do it. Control S, save. Okay, now that you have something that you like, what we're going to do is we are going to convert this vector artwork to a symbol. So what we're going to do in order to do that is we're going to right click and go down to convert to symbol. Call this flame and then make sure that it's a graphic. We're not doing a movie clip. We are doing a separate graphic that will be an animated element to a scene that we create, but it needs to be a graphic symbol. So, okay. And then if you look here in the properties tab, when you look over here, when you select the flame, it says instance of flame. That means instance of this symbol that we just made. Okay. You can also, when you need to um, animate it, you can double click to get here. Look at your navigation bar up here. We were in scene one, and now we're inside the symbol in the scene. We can go back to scene one here. We can also access the symbol over here in the library tab. Let's double click flame. Okay, let's go back to the scene. What I wanna show you is what happens when you edit a symbol and you have multiple instances of that symbol on your stage, okay? So I've got three. And this looks like, hey, if I just go and edit this symbol here, that's the only one that should be edited, right? Well, no, that's not how it works. Check this out. Okay, let's go back. Oh, look, every single instance of the symbol was edited. We go back again. Cool. So that's how you can do it in the library. You could also do it here on the stage. See, if you double click to select the instance of the symbol, and you can tell over here in the library, it'll be selected. And you can tell up here in your navigation bar, you're not in the scene, you're in the symbol. So whatever you do to symbol is going to happen to all instances. I want to have some distinct little flames to get started with um, to animate. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pre-transform these guys so they're just a little different. Notice I'm in my scene, not my symbol. So I'm gonna, when you work in Illustrator and Animate, this is frustrating to me. When you try to resize something, it keeps its um, uh, proportions. If you just click and drag, so if you want to just pull from one side or another, hold the Alt key by your space bar, and then you can play with this. Okay. So I'm just going to do a little light editing to kind of make them look a little more distinct from each other. Notice it has not affected the symbol. Now to animate this, we're gonna double click, come into the flame symbol in the library. Right now we just have a static image, a static graphic. So down here inside your symbol, what you're doing is you're creating a nested symbol. Basically when you double click to get into the symbol in the library, you entered this graphic like inside its own little box or its nest. That's what they mean, mean by nested symbols. What I'm gonna be doing in here is animating this and programming it to do what I want it to do. So down here in the timeline, add a keyframe at 10, 20, and 30. Leave frames one through nine alone, okay? Click somewhere in frames 10 through 19, and then you're going to be doing just a little bit of, like I did on the main stage, a little bit of animation. Keep it subtle. 
You don't want to go crazy. One over here. Maybe a little something. What am I looking at here? Maybe small. Let's go tall. Okay. Cool. We have a nice little change going on here. All right. Now I keep pushing play and it keeps stopping. I can put it on loop, this button here. Be careful when you do that. This freaks me out every time. If I just push play and it's freaking out like that, check up here. You can either make sure that you have this blue part on, click and drag for it to cover what you want it to loop. Okay. Now to smooth it out, what you'll do is click single click this last frame here hold shift single click the first frame right click create shape tween now it's smooth nice what you're going to do here is you're going to make a new keyframe and then get rid of this one just for smoothness sake see that okay Let's go back to the stage. Now that we have it all edited, it'll look really nice, right? Oh no, it's not doing anything. That's because we have 30 frames animated in the symbol, the nested animation, but that's all by itself. We've put it in a box. Now we need to take it out of the box and put it in our timeline. So I'm going to add a keyframe at 29 frames. I'm going to put that on loop. And let's see how it goes. Ooh, pretty. I like it. All right. So what we're going to do now, you notice that these flames are all perfectly choreographed and in sync. It's not really what fire does. So I'm going to get rid of these frames that I just created. And I'm going to start each of these instances of the flame symbol a little different. Here's what we're going to do. I'm going to single click one of the instances of the symbol. I'm going to come over to the object tab and I'm going to come down to frame picker. So these are all of the 29 frames that we just animated over in the nested animation box. You'll notice that they're slightly different as it goes through the animation and the shape tween we just created. So to have these start at different frames so that they're not perfectly in sync anymore, you're going to have them start on different frames. So the one on the left, let me start at frame five. The one in the middle, how about frame 20? And the one on the right, why not frame 10? Let's do it. So we got a nice little fire going here. You can also do the test button up here. So we got a nice smooth loop going on. Say that I want to duplicate my flames here. I'm going to hold my Alt key, click and drag, just kind of, you know, duplicate them, stretch them out. I'm going to right click and flip it horizontal just for just for some nice little um, ver variety. All right, and let's check out the loop. <gasps> Ew, what is that glitch? I'll tell you what that glitch is. Remember when you're using keyframes, the animation changes, okay? So I made all of this edit over here by adding in all of these other frames or flames but this one stayed the same because it's a separate set of frames. So to fix that, click the last frame of this chunk here, make a new keyframe, get rid of this one, and then watch it through. Awesome. I also kind of want to 
Mm, you can single click different uh, flames because I kind of, this one looks like goat horns. It's weird. I don't like it. So I was holding alt to copy it, but I also just want to move it. I don't like it there. Um, I like this one. Bring it over here. And okay, and you notice I liked the little small one in front, and now this copy got put on top because it's the last thing I placed. So if you need to move things around, right click, arrange. I'm going to send this backwards, and then my little um, cute one shows up again. I want to bring this one up front, arrange, bring to front. Cool. Let's see how that looks. Oh, I got that glitch again. Because why? Because I made changes after I set the keyframe. Uh, if this happens to you, don't freak out. Just be better. Let's test it. There we go. You got some really beautiful flames going on. I need to save. Control S. And then I'm going to export it as an animated GIF. Make sure I save it to my class folder. Here's my OneDrive folder, Flickering Flames. I'm going to call this Randall Flickering Flames 3.0 because that's what we're on. Save. And in my folder, what do I see? Flames 3.0. Beautiful. I'm gonna use this for the next project when you're working on setting a camera. In the meantime, submit. Enjoy the beauty of your creation.